most gracious, the most merciful. I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind. From the evil of the whisperer, who whispers evil in the hearts of men. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining me again for another installment of Life Lessons from the Quran, a study of Surah Taha and the life of Musa alayhi salam. We've come to an important juncture, subhanAllah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recounts to us the response to Fir'aun and the response of Fir'aun in return to Musa alayhi salam. Allah tells us that Fir'aun understood everything. He now knows enough about Allah that he's accountable for his kufr. And now he is eligible for the punishment of Allah because of his kathib, his rejection of the truth, and because of his aba, his pushing away the truth. Qala, Fir'aun says, Ajitana, have you come to us, O Musa? Litukhrijana min ardina bisihrika, ya Musa. Have you come to us, O Moses, to remove us from our land? Falanatiyannaka. We will return back to you with magic that is equal if not greater to it. So I order you to choose a day where you are to be made ready to face my magicians. A day that we will never be late for and you better not be late for it. A day that is advantageous for the both of us. I'm not going to harm you, but I'm going to show that you are a fraud. This is what Fir'aun is asserting. Now it's important for us to understand the difference between the mu'jiza and sihr. Sihr, my dear brothers and sisters, is very real. Magic, witchcraft, wizardry, sorcery, sihr is real. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he tells us, you know, in a variety of hadith that there is magic and there is wizardry and that it is of different levels. And the Imams, when they talk, such as Imam Al-Qarafi and others, where they talk about magic, they put it into two main categories. One category of magic is a pact, an agreement that a human being makes with a jinn, with the shaitan, whereby an evil jinn almost controls that human being's processes that the human being thinks they're the one requesting from the jinn when in fact it's the jinn is using that human being to do and serve them and worship them instead of Allah and examples of that are plentiful in both the Quran and the Sunnah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he reveals to us about the people of Babel that two angels descended upon them, Harut wa Marut, and this is one interpretation, there are others in the tafsir, and that these two angels were sent as a fitna, a test for humanity. They were ordered to teach mankind the sihr, the power to influence the jinn. Mankind are able with certain incantations, certain things, to influence the jinn, to bring the jinn near to them to do certain things. Not that the jinn are controlled by the human, but to open the gateway between the unseen world of the jinn and the human existence and reality. But whenever the angels would come and people would request that knowledge, they would say to them, Innama nahnu fitna. We are a test from Allah. Fala takfur. Don't disbelieve in God. And the Prophet ﷺ says that the practitioner of wizardry, where they make an agreement with the jinn by offering them service and worship instead of Allah, that that is kuf, disbelief in God. The second type of magic is the magic of illusion. It's not really magic. It has nothing from the jinn. It's sleight of hand. It's making you look one place where they do something somewhere else. That level of magic is the magic that was possessed by the people at the time of Fir'aun. 
they were able to control the simple-minded with simple illusions and tricks done in particular ways and times and conditions that made people fall scared of them. They could bully people into accepting their leadership and authority. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a clear distinction between what the prophets of Allah came with and what magicians had. And Allah says, وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانِ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ Sulaiman never disbelieved in God because there are those who claim that Solomon controlled the jinn through magical incantations and that he's the one who left that behind. And Allah says, Sulaiman never ever did that. He was a prophet of Allah and the power he had over the jinn was a mu'jiza, was a sign and a miracle from Allah. It wasn't magic. But it's the devils who began to spread magic and teach human beings ways to communicate with them to teach them those incantations and statements. May Allah protect us from them. Allahumma ameen. One of the things if, if you were to research, and I ask you not to actually, is if you were to look at the Babylonian record, the, you know, the writing, and if you were to look at the symbols that they used for their formulas and talisman, which are, you know, things that as Muslims we don't wear. Sometimes you see people wearing necklaces and they have weird writing inside and weird designs and symbols. Now there were seven symbols. They were called the seven seals. Those symbols have the same structure, same signs from Babylonian times into Egyptian times and then later into Hebrew times. And you can see that record and there's lots of research, you know, people who have examples of that. Now sadly, into the Islamic era, you find it also that in the Iraqi, in the Moroccan, in different places, in Egyptian, in also Indian and Asian countries, the same symbols that have been used from way back then are used. And this is an extension of the power of the jinn over mankind, seeking us to worship them. May Allah protect us from it. So what are the differences between the miracles of the prophets and magic. Well, one of the things is that the mu'jiza only brings good, while magic is usually used for evil. Number two, the mu'jiza can't be cancelled out. It can't be made to stop once Allah has ordered it to start. On the other hand, witchcraft, inna Allah has Allah vows that witchcraft is not unending. And therefore, you know, some people they'll call up and they'll say, Sheikh, you know, I've had magic done on me, it's been three years. No. It doesn't work that way. Inna Allah sayubtilu. There is no open lease. It's not open in that sense, right? Also from the differences between al-mu'jiza and magic is that the mu'jiza only occurs at the hands of a prophet of Allah who is given it as an honor from Allah. It is not from themselves that they do it. Musa alayhi salam did not know that his stick would turn into a snake. But it's Allah who made it become a snake. He didn't know that his stick had that power. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did not know of the power that Allah would give in him and put in him, but it was given to him. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا فِي الْكِتَابِ Ya Muhammad, you didn't know what was in this book that was sent to you Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the power of the Qur'an, the greatest miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu right? And therefore the Prophets of Allah always make dua to Allah because they don't know when the miracle will happen. It's not they who do it, it is a blessing from Allah. While witchcraft, of course, it is purposeful and it's built up. People intentionally do the things that they seek to make that action and that witchcraft. And you know, they have processes behind it that they are the ones who instigate it and it is not a blessing that is offered. Also, the causes. The causes of the miracle and the mu'jiza is that it is directed by Allah as a sign that leads to Allah, not the Prophet. The Prophets of Allah, when the mu'jizah would occur, people don't say Muhammad is the one or Musa is the one. They immediately recognize it is Allah. It is the one who sent him. While wizards, they always try to take the credit. I'm the one who did it. I'm the one that can help you. If you pay me this much, I can change your life. I can make that woman love you. 
that man who doesn't want to be a good husband can be a better husband. They want to take the credit themselves and they want a reward for it. A'udhu Billah. If you had such power as you claim, why are you asking for a hundred dollars or fifty pounds? Why are you asking for such a... If you, if you could control things the way that you claim, why do you ask people for such penance in that return? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the Dajjaleen, from the deceivers, Allahumma Ameen. When we return from our break, we're going to see this momentous occasion where Musa demonstrates the truth and Allah gives him victory. This was the day of Badr of the people of Israel, the day of victory of the Prophet of Allah Musa. I hope you join me again after this short break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we've come to see before the break that Musa has set the challenge for Fir'aun after Fir'aun asks for a time to meet and Musa's ready. Fir'aun is not ready. Fir'aun, this man who claims to be God, has to ask for people to help him. Musa is ready to go and Musa says, well, let's make it a time where everything will be clear and everyone will see it. Let's not hide anything from anyone. Let's do it on the day of celebration. Let's do it at a time of duha, at a time where the sun is not high and the sun is not low, when everyone can see everything. Let's make a public display of this battle. Allahu Akbar. A heart of trueness and firmness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We come to verse number 60. And here, we see the habit of all of those who disbelieve that their habit is that they try to plot and plan they try to you know make elaborate ways to bring themselves some kind of victory and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فتولى فرعون. Pharaoh pulled back Pharaoh left Musa and he sat with his ministers he sat with his council فجمع كيده. his kaid his plan inside himself you know he began to plot what am i going to do he's anxious he sat by himself alone he began to think what's the best way out of this trouble the kaid the word kaid you know allah used it in the quran in different times allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the shaytan has kaid that the kaid, the plotting of the shaitan against you, O people, is weak. Really? Yes. Even though shaitan has been planning since the time of Adam, Allah still says it's weak. You're protected by Allah. Simple words of dhikr protect you. Ayat al-Kursi protects you from the shaitan in your sleep, in your wakefulness. Bismillah before you eat prohibits them from eating. Bismillah when you remove your clothes. Bismillah when you enter your home. Bismillah tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. When you leave your home protects you and shields you and honors you. That the shaitan and the jinn run from you. When they hear the adhan they leave. Kana kaydu shaytani da'ifa. Although the shaitan is the one who said I'm going to sit on the straight path. I'm going to come from in front of them and behind them and the right of them and the left of them, above them and beneath them. At the end of the day, da'ifa, weak. If you have strength in Allah, if you remain upon the truth, same as Fir'aun, fatawalla Fir'aun, that's the word Allah uses to describe Fir'aun sitting and planning and plotting. He thinks he's going to come up with something great that's surely going to give him victory. فَتَوَلَّى فِرْعَوْنَ فَجَمَّعَ كَيْدَهُ He gathered himself and his thought ثُمَّ أَتَى He came to his people قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَى Moses said to the people Pharaoh began to gather, you know, his ministers, his troops, his general everyone that's going to plan and strategize and whenever Musa saw these people coming to the palace whenever he saw them going to have a meeting and Allah informs Musa of why they're there. Fir'aun fa'arsala fil madaini. Allah says in Surah Al-Shu'ara, He sent riders out to all of the cities of Egypt. He sent people as far east and west and north and south 
to gather the best magicians. ائتوني بكل ساحر عليم. He said, bring me even by force every learned magician. I can't lose today. If I lose today, it's going to be even greater of an embarrassment. It's enough that I can't do battle with Musa. I am nothing. It's enough that I have to rely on these magicians. So bring me the best of them. So Musa, alayhi salam, when these people are coming from far cities, far places, he sees them coming into the city, into Egypt. And Musa would say to them, قَالَ لَهُمْ Musa. Musa would say to them, وَيْلَكُمْ Beware. لا تفتروا على الله كذبا. Don't invent lies. Don't speak untruths about the creator of the heavens and the earth. فَيُسْحِتَكُمْ بعذاب. Or else Allah will cut you from your base. يُسْحِتَكُمْ means, you know, if there were trees, that you've cut it so that it doesn't even show up from the surface of the earth. That you pulled out the roots. فَيُسْحِتَكُمْ بعذاب. That his punishment will uproot you. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ افْتَرَى And truly, the one who betrays and lies about God will be the greatest loser. Allahu Akbar. The warning of Musa is eloquent and powerful. Musa, as a prophet of Allah, does not want people to rebel against Allah. He doesn't want people to lie about God. He doesn't want people to make a mistake that will cause them to be destroyed in this life and the next. He wants good for people. He says, وَيْلَكُمْ Beware. I can't stop you now. I can't hold you back, but I must tell you to be cautious. وَيْلَكُمْ Don't do it. لا تفتروا. Don't invent about God what isn't true. عَلَى اللَّهِ كذبا. Don't be from those who align yourselves with that which is sinful and wrong, or else you will be uprooted. فَيُسْحِتَكُمْ بِعَذَابٍ وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ افترى. Wretched in loss are those who invent lies about Allah. فَتَنَازَعُوا أَمْرَهُمْ The magicians and Pharaoh began to debate with one another. فَتَنَازَعُوا أَمْرَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ وَأَسَرُّوا النَّجْوَى Pharaoh and the magicians, they were debating and talking, and they made sure to be quiet, to be secretive. Because every time someone new came, Musa was warning them. They said, we don't want him to know what our plan is. We want to surprise him on that day. And it's at this time that we see in other places in the Quran that the magicians, they would ask Pharaoh, lana la ajra? Are you going to pay us well? Yes, and I will make you nearest to me. If you help me now, no one will be richer than you. No one will have more power than you. And see, look at the weakness of a man who claims godliness, that I will pay you whatever you ask. I will bring you whatever you want. I will do anything for you. That same word is similar to the offer that the mushrikeen of Quraysh were trying at that very time with Muhammad Sallallahu In the early days, which is the days of the revelation of Surah Taha, they came to the Prophet and his uncle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they said to him, say to your nephew, say to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you want wealth, qasamna laka min amwalina. If you want to be the richest one, we will each give a share of our wealth. We'll still be wealthy, but all of us will give something and we will make you aghnana, the richest of us. And if you don't want that, if you want power, malakna, we will make you our king. We'll make you the king. Da, leave these words that you're saying. Don't keep telling people not to honor our God. You're going to ruin our business. People come for hajj and we make money. If you want women, whatever you want, Ya Muhammad Wasallam, we'll give it to you. And when his uncle came and he spoke these words to the Prophet ﷺ, you know, it's recorded in the seerah that the Prophet said, if they were to put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala an ad'a amr requesting that I leave this, I would never leave it for the sun and the moon, the power of that, which Pharaoh doesn't have. 
which no one possesses. If they were to give me what no one can give, I still would not leave this simple life of calling to the truth. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They argued, what can you give me? And Pharaoh was willing to give them anything. But be victorious. You will be the nearest to me. But keep this secret. All of their debates were quiet. Qalu, they said to each other, Fir'aun wants to win popular support amongst the people, amongst his ministers. They debated with one another and they hid it in secret. Allah says, Qalu, they said, in hadani, Pharaoh and each other, they spoke to each other that these two magicians, Musa and Harun, Lasahirani, they are two magicians, nothing more. Yuridani and Yukrijakum, they only want to take you out of your country, of your place. Min Ardikum, from your own land, you are Egyptians, this belongs to you. Bisihrihima, because on account of the magic that they perform. And they want to take away your way of life. That is an important, important statement from Fir'aun. Pharaoh says three things there that remain the modus operatus, remain the same three things that people, when they want to manipulate masses of people, they follow this same tactic. They label the other, they make a false claim about them that they want to take their land. And third, even if they don't want to take their land, they want to change your way of life. Those same three things are heard until today, where people make this claim against the people of truth. When we return, inshallah, in upcoming episodes, we will see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counteract that negativity and that false statement, the lies that Pharaoh spins. He said that Musa wants to take their land when that was never the claim of Musa and Harun alayhim salam. All they wanted were people to believe in God and to accept the truth and to lessen the punishment that was inflicted upon Pani Israel. But Pharaoh spins this outrageous lie that now seeks to undo the good that Musa has come with and in our next insha'Allah installment, we will see how Allah grants victory to those who believe and remain firm in patience. I hope you join me again. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the most gracious. The most merciful I seek refuge with Allah The Lord of mankind The King of mankind The God of mankind From the evil of the whisperer Who whispers evil in the hearts of men who withdraws from his whispering in one's heart After one remembers Allah